So, the, our, the question, first of all, is why was Dan punished that it was not able to settle in its own land, which would have been south of where we are right now? Can anyone think of a reason why God would punish the tribe of Dun that they would not have access to their own land and would have to find land somewhere else? Does anyone recall in the wilderness when the tribe of Dun did not allow somebody to take up residence in Dun? Right. So understand, first of all, is there's the story and the story behind the story. The people of Dun had to come here and settle here. But they were essentially a wandering tribe. Why did God punish them in this way? Because we find in the Torah, there was a very unusual situation where you had a child whose mother was a Jew and whose, she, she had a child with an Egyptian man. So if, you, if the mother is Jewish, is, is the child Jewish? Yes, of course. But what, what tribe does that child belong to? He has no, no tribe. He has no tribe. What does he have to do? He has to come to a tribe and say, is it okay if I stay with you? The Torah tells us that he came to the people of Don, and the people of Don said, threw him out. And it's for this reason that he cursed God. He was so angry. You know, sometimes people could be so upset and so angry, they leave their, their faith in God because they encounter someone who's supposedly religious, and they see that they act like hypocrites and just turns them off to God completely. He cursed God and he was put to death for that in the wilderness. It was a very severe situation. But God was eventually held accountable for it and they were punished to be in a place, basically a wandering tribe that had to come here. We're standing now in front of one of the most significant archaeological places in the north. In fact, I, I think this is the most significant place in the north. As you know, that after Solomon's death, his son, Rehovim, um levied, uh, his son refused to listen to the people who begged him to lower their taxes. After all, King Solomon built a temple, there was an enormous amount of money that was necessary for these endeavors, and when King Solomon passed away at the age of 52, the people said to his son, who is now the new king, please make our lives easier, lower the taxes. And Rehavam asked the rabbis, the sages, the elders, what should we do? And they instructed him, they instructed him to tell the people that things will become easier on them. He unfortunately, he was a very young man, he was a, he was a young fellow, he asked his own friends, what do you think? And they said to him, these are not the words, but if you give them a finger, they'll want a hand. And Rehovah made one of the epic mistakes of any king in history. And that is, he told them famously that if God, if my father beat you with whips, I will beat you with whips of scorpions. And it caused a revolt. It caused a split. That was the cause of the civil war. And what happened was that the Jewish people in the north, led by a man named Yeruvim ben Nevat, set up a kingdom of Israel here in the north. Okay? So we're a bit away from Jerusalem. The problem was that here, in, here, if you're in the north, imagine you're in the north, but you know there's a temple in the south. You know that there's the king's palace, the Davidic dynasty is in the south. Jerusalem is in the south. Jerusalem, King Solomon's temple. So the people yearned, they longed to be in the south. And in fact, we're told that, in fact, many parts of Naphtali, of Zvulun, and in Usher actually fled and they snuck away and they went down south. But the key point is what did the kings of the north do? What did Jeroboam do? What did the other kings of the north do? They set up golden calves. They set up idols in the north so the Jews will not go south. They set up statues here in the, in the north so Jews wouldn't go south. My friends, 
turn and look in front of you, you're looking at it right now. This is, this here is an altar. In, now when I say intact, you see the metal part that you see here on top with the corns on top? That's a reconstruction of what we think it probably looked like if the altar was complete. Okay, we don't know with certainty that this is exactly, but you have the the horns of the altar on the top, which you see in on altars common in both in the Jewish altar and in the idolatrous altar. So this is a reconstruction. I don't want anyone to think that we know exactly what it was, but based on all the archaeological evidence, the overwhelming evidence points to that this is what it would look like. So here you're looking at literally what was set up here in the north to, to act as a way of, oh, you would have a golden calf here, here you would have statues here, I mean idols here, and therefore people's desire to offer sacrifices would be satisfied here in the north and they hopefully would not go down to the south. I want to also point to you, if you step around this way, you can always tell an idolatrous um, altar, if you wouldn't mind, just for a moment, because this is going to come up a lot. You'll see, or right over here, leading up to the altar, this is how you can always tell that, is this altar for God, or is this altar for an idol? Okay, so right here, what do you see is a stairway. Right here you see a stairway, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. what does the Torah say about an altar? Are you allowed to have stairs going up to an altar? No. No. What do you have to have instead? Always a ramp. So when you see stone stairs, this is original, this is not a reconstruction. We're looking at, we're looking at here 2,000 uh, 2,800 years old, intact. This is not, someone didn't come and recreate this. This is not Disneyland. Everything you see is intact except for this. Because that, because this is to give you an idea of what it would look like. So you had the stairway that would have gone all the way up to the altar. Offerings were brought over here. You could see all the, you see, where we. it's wet now. Normally I would give this talk over there. But there you see the staircases there. People would sit. They can observe from all sides. They can observe the offerings that were brought here. And the, this is what the Torah was talking about. This is what the prophets were talking about. That they set up altars in the north. You are looking at it right now. This is, by the way, a relatively modern discovery. And it's really fascinating. Because this you're looking at. This is Tanakh. This is scripture taking place right over here.